Hey guys, what's happening? So if you watched my last video, then you uh, saw this $600 uh, offer up score. Working perfectly, everything works great. Crazy for like a $6,000 machine. You know, it's like 5500 I think, but plus shipping. Um, so a super expensive machine, paid 600 bucks for it. But one of the issues I don't like about it is this controller. I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, you can control the access and stuff, but I don't know if this thing can do like back backlash compensation. Um, plus, being able to actually like, load files and stuff, you know, you're just going to load it via USB. Uh, so I do actually like Linux CNC and Mach 3 on that. So, got a couple of other machines I've done conversions on. This machine here is running Mach 3. We've got the uh, monitor on there. Same thing with the the lathe here. Same thing converted. But the cool thing is, since these were actually full like retrofits, these were never CNC. Um, this should be a lot faster with this one. I'll show you this real fast. All right, yeah, like I said, it's fully already CNC controlled, so it's going to be way, way, way quicker. All right, so here is the control board. Let me get my light on here for you. All right, so there we go. So what we have here is a VFD, it's a 2.2, well the spindle is 2.2 kilowatt, 24K spindle. It actually runs on 220. Um, and then it goes into a large uh, AC adapter, or it's just really a transformer, it's not converting, it's not adapting. Um, so it goes from 220 to 70 volts AC, and that's what powers those drivers. So those are AC controlled drivers. Um, they're still pretty dirty. This this guy was doing a lot of stone grinding with it. So I might probably clean those off. Wipe them down. And then you have your uh, main power right there. And then you have a distribution block. And then I think that's a line conditioner right there. Uh, that thing in the very right corner. That little metal box. And that's the Rich Auto controller that connects the handheld. That's where the cables are there. And then you have a 24 volt power supply, which powers the Rich Auto. Um, so because it's already wired like that already, I should hopefully just be able to move the wires over. So and here one of the things I want to do is I want to get spindle feedback, like index back in into Mach 3. So I actually have, can control the spindle. I can get you know what the true you know RPM range is, and you know, getting feedback from the VFD into Mach 3. And uh, there is a touch probe on this thing already. So I need to figure out where that goes or how it's wired in. Um, but yeah, I don't have the manual for this thing, but it's cool how they're all labeled like that. Um, yeah, I noticed that too, the, if you look at here, the, on the right hand side right here, there's two 5 volts. So it's ground triggered. The step in direction is ground triggered, where it's a constant 5 volt. So a tip, like your typical Mach 3, that's exactly how we do it, Mach 3. Um, yeah. yeah, the handheld controller is alright, but it's like, man, it's not graphical, and it's, you know, loading files is a headache, and it's not, it's, it's kind of a headache to navigate the menus, all the up and down arrow keys. Alright, so I'm going to get this off, so I'm going to show, sure, show you this real fast. This is the... I've actually had this for a while now. Um, it's called a Novasun MVME or NVEM, and it's Ethernet version. And it's not a great controller. I mean, it's better than this USB controller. Um, you know, you don't get as much interference with the Ethernet. You know, EMI coming back into the wire. Um, I do actually have some jumper pins in here. I had, uh, you know, done Linux CNC with this thing. Um, there is a, a version of the firmware for Linux CNC. So if I ever want to switch, I can do that. Um, and actually, off here, I already have a uh, thing for a NV MPG, which is a nice color MPG. So I got to figure out the spindle. I got to get the access. I think this thing was only licensed for three access. So eventually, I will probably because I want to do fourth access on this thing. But for now, I just want to get it going. Um, and what else? Input outputs. So. I have index input, which will go here. Then I have, um, you know, obviously the uh, limit switches. Inputs, three limit switches, and um, outputs. Um, eventually, I'm going to be having a cooling system on here. 
um, you know, I'm not going to be using like a five gallon water bucket. I'm actually going to be running like a closed loop system, like a CPU for a car, or a computer CPU cooler. But I already know where the parts are coming in. I'll make a video about that. But yeah, I want to be able to control. I'm not sure if I'm going to control that from um, the software and the controller, or if I'm just going to have it directly tied into the VFD. So when the spindle turns on, it will turn on the cooling pump automatically. So anytime the spindle moves, the, the pump will turn on, and the fans, the radiator will turn on. All right, so I'm gonna get this off and start moving the wires over. So like my other builds, I'm gonna be running a mini computer, and I'm also gonna probably do the same thing where I'm gonna have a thing come up to mount like a, you know, like a monitor mount, permanent monitor mount, keyboard that can just control it. So each of these CNC machines all individually contain their own computers. Yeah, I probably end up using like a little HP mini computer, or I do actually have an ITX computer I might use too. But for now I'm just going to use my laptop to get it going and programmed. Then once I get the configuration that I want set up, set up then I'll uh, move over to the new computer. This is my first experience with the Rich Auto, but um, I noticed that there's a shield, so I'm guessing that's a ground. So if you actually had the, that's kind of cool, I mean, so if you have some shielded wire, you can. I'm assuming you could take the uh, braided part and run it into the shield, and that would create like the you know ground effect shielding around the cable. Yeah, I wish they would have used a black wire for the ground, even though it's actually labeled 24 volt and zero volt. That just you know there should be a Maya sign next to it, and also it should be a black wire. I mean, I mean at least it's labeled, I guess. All right, so here's a rich auto. Um, I need to figure out what these mean. Um, why, 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 why? Why is it labeled Y? It's, I mean, it's not Y access. These are a lot of outputs probably going to the uh, VFD. Um, because there's really no pump control, so. Um, any other inputs? Yeah, I might switch over to a eventually like an EC500, EC300. More even even a Mesa card for Linux CNC. I'm kind of like I've been playing messing with Linux CNC for about six months now, and I mean it's all right. I mean it's I'm an IT guy and I work with Linux all day long, <laughs> so I'm very familiar with Linux. But it's like I don't know. I mean I'm still trying to see. I mean it's it's more modern, but it's I don't know. Definitely on the fence about Linux CNC. I mean actually I have messed with. I've done a couple of retrofits with Centroid Acorns. Acorn, center with acorn is pretty nice. So I might do that maybe. So see, you have two pins going to one. So it's ground trigger. So the, the pulse and direction is triggered on the ground side, negative side, and these are paired together. Uh, on the N NVMe, uh, there's only one 5 volt out. So they need to be daisy chained together like this. But I'm not going to be able to fit both those pins in that small connector. But I don't want to. I don't want to cut these cables off because I know when I, once I get like an EC500 or, or a better controller, it actually has two 5 volts dedicated for it. So I don't want to cut that off. So I might just run a jumper up here, right here, where they come in for the 5 volt. Let's just, just run a jumper to bring the 5 volt over. This is such a nicely clean labeled wire. I want to kind of preserve that. I mean, I'm glad they fixed that in the new version. They didn't use these tiny little connectors. That's way too many wires to have in a small space. And I'm, I understand they're trying to keep it small and keep it multi-axis. It's like six axis. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus spindle. So I mean, the only problem with uh, the getting the new version, like the EC300, EC500, is I actually was on AliExpress and bought them from three different stores. So I'd, I basically buy them, wait a week, and they say they couldn't get them. Or it's going to be like a month and a half delay. So right now it's just supply shortage, I guess. I'm not sure. But so originally I then got my EC300 on Amazon, but then yeah, now I can't get them on Amazon anymore. So you can get them on Amazon, but you have to wait. You know, they're coming from China. They're not being uh, stocked locally, stock locally in the U.S. All right. So before I have this thing bolted down, I'm going to test right now. I should at least be the test access. So I'm going to grab my laptop, and uh, I already have it configured. I, I, use, I normally use this thing as my tester. So if I'm out on site, you know, with a customer. Testing or out of testing real fast, I'll just bust up this Mach 3 control and it works. So that way I at least have pulse and direction. Alright, so one thing I've learned about these Nova Sun products is that you need to statically give your computer 192.168.1.10 and the device is on 192.168. So the NVMe 
or NVEM is on uh, 1.100. Alright. Let's see if I can get this guy in Mach 3. Let's see. Mach 3, no. Alright, Digital Team 3.0. That's Okay. Um, let's see if I can zoom it. <laughs> well, I had it configured last time I used this machine. If you can see that video. Okay, my X works. Oh, so I'm about to mess with the. Uh, I got to figure out the pitch of these ball screws. Z. Alright, cool. Got the axis working. So the next step is I gotta work on the spindle. I just wanna get the wiring done. Because all the air stuff, if I need to change the direction, I can all do it in software. Um, Alright, so. Gotta do the inputs, the end stops, uh, the spindle, and uh, probe and or things like that. Okay, so the cool thing is, is these are already kind of labeled forward, DCM, which is ground. Um, so one thing I need to figure out is that these things have it wired for index out because I like to get real time RPM, RPM control in uh, Mach 3. But here are the inputs. Let's kind of move them over. I looked, even though they're labeled a certain thing, we're talking switch one, switch two. Um, doesn't, I can't tell if it's wired correctly or not, and I don't want to burn out this VFD. Yeah, I might need a factory default this thing, multifunction input. Um, whereas I need to be down here, but it's wired up here. Even though they're labeled a certain thing, which is odd. Yeah, I got spindle going. Right at the headache. Got 5,000 RPM. It's moving. Alright. Time to work on the end stops. Alright guys, done with the Mach 3 conversion on this uh, CNC router. Um, I think I might have forgot to film stuff, but sometimes it, just, it really slows me down to stop and film. Um, sometimes like I, I just want to get focused and get it finished. Um, but let me show you what I did here. So I welded on... Um, Two little pieces of box, you know, and then I created this pull mount just because I wanted it. I didn't want a laptop, I want a dedicated unit that's totally self contained, that it's not, you know, not moving around laptops. Like all my all my systems are like that. All they're all they're all dedicated units. They're laid back there, all dedicated computers. I don't have to worry about them, they're all they're all separate. You know, I don't want to fire some kind of laptop and try to choose the profile. Um, alright, so there's the pull mount coming up. I had to design a new mount right here. Um, I actually designed the mount on this CNC machine here. Um, yeah, just because this is actually an all-in-one computer. Um, whereas the other, all my other machines are actually like small little mini computers. I'll show you that. I did other videos about that. See, you can see a little HP computer in there. Well, this one's an all-in-one self-contained unit. Um, this was it's Core i7. I upgraded it to 16 gig of RAM, solid state drive, uh, touch screen. And I'm running the, uh, what's it called, uh, Physics Anonymous, their killer screen set. I totally revitalized Mach 3. Um, you know, I, I think they actually said they don't mess with Mach 3 anymore. They're, they kind of stopped development on it. At least their YouTube, well, they had a YouTube channel. I don't know if they're making videos or not. All right, so um, did the, I did another video about the, the closed loop coin system. Let me go into electronics over here. So... Since I was trying to do this on a budget, um, you know, since I already have so much money tied to my other projects, um, so I, re I repurposed one of my NVM, NVEM Novasun, uh, you know, Ethernet-based Mach 3 controllers. Um, which cool thing is, there's a Linux CNC project for that, and I'm kind of messing with this um, on and off. All right, so I think I made a video about the whole, you know, the different types of uh, you know, NEMA 34. Um, so what I added was that obviously that control box. I got rid of that stupid pendant thing. I, I hated. Um, and then I have salt, three solid state relays. One controls the uh, spindle. So when I turn on the coolant, it turns on the actual. Uh, when, I, when I turn on the spindle, it turns on my uh, closed loop cooling system. 
and then I had the other two are um, pump, water pump. Um, like right now, I don't have the water pump. I don't have a water pump system for the water table, but it's gonna feed into the back. And eventually, there's gonna be a small, like a, like plastic thing here. Uh, pla I'm gonna have a slide in plastic container where I can change out the uh, water because it comes down from here, the water, like the, the wastewater, and it's gonna be repumped back up. But because, you know, I'm also gonna be doing wood on this thing, I mean, obviously I can't be using water with wood. Because this, this table was originally designed for cutting stone, but it's perfect for carbon fiber and like aluminum, you know, because you want to get the coolant. Um, but this this one is actually the water 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 table, and this one I'm gonna hook up a like an air pump to it, like a you know like a one of those uh what like aquarium bubblers like I did on my other ones, because it's a perfect amount of air and I don't have to have my air compressor running 24/7. Um, it's really quiet. It's rubber rubber pads. But it gives you just enough air to blow the chips out of the path. Um, and that's what you want. You don't really want to be cutting recutting aluminum chips. Um, so just enough air to blow those chips out of the whatever you're cutting. And not make a complete mess all over your garage. Um, Alright, let me show you that I had I actually what's funny though when I bought the <laughs> bought this keyboard on offer up too. Like 10 bucks. Uh, no more than like 30 bucks. And I also bought the guy. It's funny is the guy actually had a uh, an Xbox controller, and there is an app for that. But all right, let me show you. Uh, hitting the wrong buttons. <laughs> kind of hard to do this with the camera. So let me show you this. I actually had an increment mode. All right, so I'm gonna try to do that. Yeah, Xbox controllers are pretty cool. I mean, MPGs are. I kind of like MPGs, but. So now I gotta dial in the access. You know, I'm gonna use my dial uh, indicator, and then I make sure that when this thing actually goes one millimeter, uh, when I tell it to move one millimeter, it actually goes actually perfectly one millimeter. Plus, you need to figure out uh, when the ball screw changes directions, right? You're gonna have a little backlash, so you gotta you gotta figure that out too. Um, man, I'm making everybody about that. I'm not sure, but it's yeah, you gotta compensate for the backlash and the ball screw. Even though these are like gigantic ball screws. Um, totally overkill for this whole thing, but... Maybe it's because we're cutting stone? I don't know. They use really good components on this machine. Um, I made a video about this machine, but see, they, they use high wind rails and... Um, I know I get kind of sidetracked here. Um, Alright, cool. Yeah, computer works fine. I'm actually probably going to design... If I keep this Xbox controller, I'm going to design like a pull mount where I can just store it here. Um, I could probably get a wireless controller too, but... Um, main thing is I'm trying to figure out the increment situation so I can increment into it, you know, set zero. I could do like Y, X, Z, I can, do, I can set my zeros. So I could do increments and do zeros and stuff. All right, I think I'm pretty much there. So, you ready? I'm going to start making my first cuts with this thing, but let me show you the spin real fast. Um, and then, like I said, I mean, if, you want, if you're interested in the closed loop system, um, look at my library of videos. And I made a video about the closed loop system. All right, I'm gonna do power on, and that, as soon as I turn on the spindle, it triggers the, the pump. The pump and my cooling fans back there, they kick on. Um, so like I said, that's an indicator, so I know the actual pump is working and you're know, recirculating. And it's tied into that solid state relay down there. Alright, so if you're interested in this kind of, these kind of videos or this sort of like CNC stuff, uh, I make a lot of videos about it because I'm doing a lot of conversions and messing around with it. So as far as I have to design tons and tons of parts just to, when I'm doing these conversions. At least to, to do it like uh, the way I want it. Like you can see back there the pull mount, all the different keyboard mounts and uh, you know they're all on my Thingiverse page. All the different mounts for all this stuff. And then I print it out over there. Nice three printers. Um, all right, man, this is cool. I mean, I, if you're not familiar with this uh, thing, I picked up for 600 bucks this machine, which is an insane deal. Um, one thing I still got to figure out, though, is the uh, this probe thing. 
I mean, it actually came with a machine. Um, I mean, I know what's wrong with it because it wants a. I might want to go into too much detail, but it wants a positive trigger instead of a negative trigger. I could accomplish that with an optocoupler. Um, or I might just get rid of this thing altogether and get like a, like one of these little. Uh, see the touch probe over there? Yeah, I get one of those things. But um, since I'm going to be using water on this thing, I don't know. So a few things I'm going to be doing here with this machine. Um, so obviously you have the water cooling down over here. So that's going to be the water. But I don't want just water. I think I showed you that with the solid state relay part of it. Um, so I'm going to have an air one that's fed from this other side. So for air, so it's going to be like, um, I guess I'll give you a demonstration. So I think mist was, as you can see, outputs activated. So whenever I activate those things, See the solid state relay down with the light on? Well, it activates those solid state relay. So one is going to control the, uh, like that one's going to control the water pump. And then uh, coolant. Because I, the reason why I have it cool, for some reason they have it backwards in this machine. Um, um, let me go back to the main screen here. So when I hit coolant here, right, this will actually enable the air and not the water. Because most likely I'm going to be probably running air most of the time. All right, well, all right, guys. If you're interested in these kind of these sort of videos, um, I got a lot of things going on here. Finishing up conversions and uh, you know making parts and learning. So, um, yeah, I'm doing a Centroid Acorns conversion for another retrofit guy. And you know, as you know, if you watch my channel, I fix tons of 3D printers. Um, all right, guys. That's uh, New Year's Day, 2023. All right. Cool, make it.